GitHub Actions has been released in GA in November 2019, and since then, it has seen an incredible growth, making it the second most popular CI tool in both private and public repos. It has many starter templates for the most popular languages and platform, like .NET Core, Java, Python, Docker, and so on and so forth. However, it doesn't have a starter template for the full .NET framework. So it's time for us to see how we can set up GitHub Actions to do CI for a full .NET framework application. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coder Dave. Thank you very much for joining me. Today, we are going to see how to set up continuous integration for a .NET framework project using GitHub Actions. But before diving deep into the code, let me take a step back and talk a little bit about Actions, because it's just much more than a CI system. In fact, it's a very powerful automation engine where Actions that are actually defined in YAML format can be triggered based on any GitHub events, such as code push, uh, pull request created, or even release created. To create and manage the workflows, the system uses the actions, which are basically individual tasks that describe some operations that are combined then into jobs. You can use official GitHub actions or community ones, and there are like a million of them. And actually, for today's video and for today's purpose, which is creating a CI for a .NET framework application, we are going to use both GitHub official actions and community ones. If you want to know more about the GitHub action service and its available actions, they should really change the name, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, so feel free to check it out. Right, let's take a look at the project we are going to work on. This is BugGuardian MVC, which is an extension of BugGuardian. Um, BugGuardian is a library that allows you to create bug or work items on your Azure DevOps account or on your um, on-premises Azure DevOps servers and Team Foundation server in case your application throws an, an handle exception. And in case of BugGuardian MVC, it's specifically written to support ASP.NET MVC application on the full .NET framework. Because of that, it's written using the full .NET framework and, of course, ASP.NET MVC. And what it does is actually adding an action filter to your application to let you automatically intercept all the exceptions. Um, you can find the link for both BugGuardian and BugGuardian MVC GitHub projects in the video descriptions. And just for transparency, both are my projects. And I also have two more extensions, one for .NET Core and one for ASP.NET Web Forms. So please go and check them out if you'd like to. So first thing to do is to head to the Action tab here. And as you can see, and as I mentioned before, there are some starter templates. We have the .NET Core template here. We have the Node.js, Rust, Python, etc. But there is no template for full .NET framework. So instead of picking one, what we will do is using the, this button here, we will set up a workflow ourselves. This will create a new actions workflow, which is basically a YAML file in this directory, so .github slash workflows, which is actually in the root of your project. You can, of course, change the name of the file to whatever you want. In this case, I will just call it uh, netfxci. Next, let's get rid of all the things we don't need here and I'll walk you through the others in a second. So let's remove these. So what we have here is a workflow called CI, and also this can be changed if we want, that runs on both the code commit and the pull request, both on the master branch. This is fully customizable. So for example, if you want to have two different CR workflow, one for push to master and one for PR, we will just create two action workflows and customize this part, maybe removing you know, the pull request part. Same if you want to execute your workflows on different branches, you will just change the branch here. Next part is where the whole work actually happens. Jobs 
and steps. You can have multiple jobs in a workflow if you want to do different uh, operations. And then each job has one or more steps in here. In this case, I removed some unused part or parts that I don't plan to use. And I left only one step, which is this, the default one, which basically is the action that will uh, check out your code, will clone your repo somewhere. First thing we have to do is changing where this workflow will run. In this case, you can see here, this will run on Ubuntu, but this is a full .NET framework CI. So that will not run on Ubuntu. We need to make it run on some windows. And as you can see, we have a, you know, auto completion and we can pick the version we want. In my case, I want to have windows latest because that will assure it will always be updated. Next, we're going to add a few steps. Remember this is YAML, so it's very picky for spaces and syntax. You need to follow exactly, uh, you know, its own syntax. First thing we're going to do is set up MS build on all the windows agents of actions. MS build is already installed, but you want to be sure it's in the path. What we're going to do is head here to the right and search for the MS build setup action, MS build. We have this one by Microsoft. So this is the official one. And as I mentioned before, we are going to use both GitHub official actions and community actions. In this case is made by Microsoft. So it's official by Microsoft, but it's not a GitHub official action. Uh, the GitHub official actions will have the, you know, actions or GitHub name in here. When you click on an action, you see how uh, the installation is and how it's to, supposed to work. So I'll just grab these and copy it in here. And you see, as I was saying before, YAML is really picky about spacing and syntax. So just be sure to follow it. Again, what this will do is setting up the path for the MS build in order to use it later. Another important component when you do, you know, full .NET framework projects is NuGet. You want to be able to restore NuGet packages. And again, as for before, um, NuGet is already installed in the agent, but we need to make sure it's actually usable. So again, let's search for NuGet. And in this case, uh, I, this is not the one I want to use. Uh, sometimes it's not immediate to, uh, you know, find the actions you're looking for. In my case, is the official NuGet one. So I want to click on this and again, copy these, pasting it here, fix the syntax, one space here. I don't really like the name, so let's change this. We can uniform that. The name is basically what uh, will be shown in the execution of the workflow. So it doesn't matter whatever you want to write in here. I just like to have it a little bit more consistent. So um, I'm going to rename it and same for these. All right. So now we have our environment set up. Let's actually do the work. Let's actually restore the NuGet packages. So again, let's go back here and search for restore NuGet. As you can see, there is no result. And this is probably the biggest difference between systems like Azure pipelines and GitHub Actions. Apart from some operations and some, you know, pre-built actions like these, you would need to do manually all the rest. And this is not only for .NET Framework, this is almost for every language and every platform. So you will have some actions to help you set up the environment, to help you set up the platform and, you know, having ready everything you need. But then the actual operations need to be done manually. How? Using the scripts or using the run actions. So let's go down here. Let's give it a name and this will be restore new get packages. And the command is just run. To the run command, you can give any command 
you can execute on a Windows machine, like in this case, or uh, you know any shell script in a Linux machine. The command for restoring is NuGet restore, and you need to pass to it the path of your solution. In my case, the solution file is in the root of the repo, so I'll just give uh, the, the actual file name. This will restore all the NuGet packages for the solution. Next, we need to actually build the solution. So again, let's go down here, dash name, build the solution. Again, remember it is just up to you, can be whatever. Run, and again, the command for it is MS build and the solution. You can pass, of course, a lot of different you know, arguments and flags, but let's keep this simple for the time being and just give this. Once we are done with our workflow, just head to the right and start commit. As always in GitHub, you can provide and you should actually provide a command. So let's go ahead and write created basic CI workflow. And you can always create a new branch, so and then do a pull request. In my case, I'm the maintainer, so you know it's not something you should do, but I'm committing directly to master. As you see here, the file is being created, you know, here inside this path that is the one I was uh, mentioning before. Again, if we go back to actions, we see that our CI definition is here, and it's been, if you see here, it was queued and now it's start executing. Let's see what's going on here. We have the build, which is the job. Uh, this is the name of the job in the workflow. Again, also this can be changed, but in my case, I didn't change it. And here you have all the actions that have been set up. Remember, this is the default one. This is just a system message as well as this. And these four here are the actions that we included in the workflow. Oh, seems like something went wrong. Let's see what it is. Input file does not exist. Oh, of course. And this is because we are not working on web forms. We are working on MVC. So let's go back and change this. Click on this and edit. As you see, the system of GitHub recognizes that this is an action and give you not only the usual editor, but also the action selection here. So go back here and change this. And also here. Let's commit again. Updated CI definition. Let's go. Let's go back here. Our definition is running. Well, actually it's being queued. And this time the command is actually working. Now it's building. And there we go. Our CI is completed. If we click back on action here, we can see that the status is now OK. If we switch back to terminal, we can see that I don't have anything in here. So I can clone it. Let's open it with PS code, you'll see here that I actually have the GitHub folder. And inside I have, let me make these a little bit bigger. I have my YAML definition with my CI here. Let's add here a parameter to make this compile in release. So for MSB slash P column configuration equals release. Save. Let's go back here. I like to do my git operations in the command line, so we do git add files status to see if anything. Yeah, we have this file, so we commit it. Git commit dash m added release flag, and let's push it. Now that we've pushed it, we can go back to GitHub actions and you see here that a new CI has been queued. 
And this is because we configured our um, workflow to be triggered on code push. Last thing I want to do is adding the badge to the GitHub page. You know, there's a small icon saying if your CI has passed or having errors. To do so, let's click on the CI definition here. And if you see on the right here, we have the create status badge. We can just copy this code. And if we go back, we can actually edit uh, you know the readme here let's remove these that came from azure pipelines and here we go let's save these and the status page commit and here we go we have the badge here saying that our ci is passing pretty cool right Having the CI definition in YAML format or actually any automation template and workflow, uh, it's quite handy. As you've seen, it gives you a lot of flexibility on editing and working on your files. And actually being just a file in your repo, it follows all the normal workflow. For example, you can have someone editing your definition and your automation, then creating a pull request and then you can review the request and if you want, approve the code and integrate it in your master. So it's pretty handy. And I think this is also the reason why other CI systems, like for example, Azure Pipelines, are adopting this uh, you know, YAML format for basically the same reasons. Talking about GitHub Actions, I would really like to see a little bit more love from GitHub for full .NET framework projects. For example, I would like to see a starter template for it just out of the box. However, as I've shown here, it's not too difficult to create your own workflows, so I think it's okay. Also, if you work before with other CI system, especially with Azure pipelines, you need to kind of clear your mind and start afresh. Because even though the syntax looks the same, it's actually quite different. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about GitHub Actions. And if you've encountered any issue or problem while working on your automation, especially in a .NET full framework project. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Coder Dave.